We control several buildings with our system. Here, here I am at the back of the house. There's the first monkey house, as you can see. Then over there's a workshop and the dogs. And then at the back, several hundred feet away, is the second monkey house. Wireless just does not work for this sort of thing. It doesn't do the distance. It's very unreliable. It can be hacked. It freezes and you don't know it know it so you need another system to supervise it. Um, lightning takes it out. No serious control systems would use wireless for something that controls the environment for animals because as it freezes up and doesn't turn the heating off or doesn't turn the air conditioning on you don't know anything about it. You don't know it's frozen up because it can't tell you. Whereas the wire system is very reliable can work up to over a kilometre away and if uh, it doesn't depend on communications like wireless does, if wireless loses communications, it stops. My system, each unit runs independent of the incoming and outgoing data. So if it stops receiving data, it will let you know and it will continue doing its own thing anyway with the last data you sent it. So it will know what settings you've set and it will keep controlling the systems to keep the animals safe. So, although wireless is very trendy, it is really not the sort of solution you want for anything too serious. This is the end of line unit. This is the unit that controls everything in each one of the remote stations. This is the unit, in this case, it's just screwed to some MDF. And I'm going to use it just to switch power directly to some sockets. So I've mounted this here. Each of the relay outputs, the relay outputs for air conditioning, heating, fan and fire alarm can switch up to 30 amps so they can easily switch to sockets. The two relays that control day lighting state and night lighting state can switch 5 amps. So these could be used uh, to control bigger systems if you so wanted but I'm just going to put sockets on here feed some 110 in and use them to switch the small heaters and small window air conditioning units that we use it's got a fire alarm pretty conventional fire alarm which when it goes off signals back to base and sends an alarm it also has a switched output it can switch an external alarm or whatever you want to wire it to has four buttons. They're not labelled on this version at the moment, I'm just about to do that, but there's day lighting and night lighting. There's a call button to call back to base, and then there is a button to turn the fan on. The software is configured that it stays in automatic temperature control mode unless you want to turn the extract fan on, in which case it will go to manual mode for 10 minutes and then go back to auto and turn the fan off. So if you were to spill something and need to switch it on quickly, just press the button and then it will take over 10 minutes later and go back to its natural state. It connects back to the base via a standard Cat5 cable and um, the driver unit and the lightning suppressor are here so that if you were to get a direct lightning strike you could just unplug it there's a little ground strap you have to take off there that's the lightning suppressor, just plug a new one in and then here's the driver unit same you can just unplug that plug a new one in so they're very well protected but if you were to get a very close line and strike it could pop it but you can simply plug a new one in this is the outlet for the speaker that gives you two-way communications the microphone is here so you can actually have two-way communications back to base um, you can also obviously hear what's going on a constant audio feed. There's also an audio level indication on the main control unit and here's the temperature and humidity sensor. There are lights here which show audio level when the audio level is too high shows uh, which unit is switched on the air conditioning, the heater or the fan. There's a status display which shows the main unit is signaling this unit and there's communication. If that were to fail this thing is completely autonomous and would take over and this little light would double flash to show you that it's taken over control and that there's an issue of breaking the cable or a loose connector or something like that so it will always 
stay in control. You can't override it because having the ability to override it means you can leave it in the wrong state. So it will always look after itself. It's possible to connect other external uh, alarms such as fire alarms or other inputs on the board. That's an option. And then this side is the power supply unit. Which I've mounted externally, it can be replaced if needs be, but they seem to be very reliable. This is the main control PC. This shows you the status of all the different stations. It shows you the temperature in the green, then the humidity. It shows you the target humidity and an alarm which will go off, which is a certain number of degrees above the target humidity. The target humidity will change depending on what the setting is for each temperature. You set a hu desired humidity level for each temperature to maintain a comfort state. Remote control shows that the system is being controlled from here. The command's enabled, so we haven't disabled it from here, in case it's a station we're not using. It's showing the air conditioning is on in dehumidity mode dehumidifying so it won't control temperature it will just get down to a certain humidity that you've set. And we can set day and night time temperatures. It shows that the um, lighting is on day mode, it will switch to night automatically and you can see the different sensors. Now this one I've got disabled so you can see the air conditioner switched off and the control switched off so it's over the temperature so it's giving us a hot alarm. But because it's disabled, it's not going to give us an audible alarm, which it, it would do if it was if we'd enabled it. It's just here to show you the different alarms. So there are alarms for audio level, hot and cold, humidity and fire. It also shows you the heat index in each area. So here's the heat index. As you can see, the one giving us the alarm, the heat index is 104 degrees. This uses the um, government NOAA calculation for heat index, so it reads the humidity and the temperature. Gives us that. So this looks after itself, basically. If anything were to go wrong, it would give us an alarm. If anything were to be outside the parameters we've set, with this, we can see the temperature and humidity curves for each station with this graph and we can zoom in to a particular time see all the different stations how they're tracking if we add the one that's uh, disabled we'll see the temperature is way off the charts there This is the temperature and humidity rules that we set. So we can set a minimum temperature and then the maximum temperature is 85 degrees. As soon as it gets to 85 degrees it will put the air conditioner permanently on to bring the temperature down to the 75 to 85 degree range. And each degree of temperature can have a different humidity setting. And this sets the comfort level. So it's not really all about cooling, it's about controlling the humidity. So as the temperature goes up, we drop the humidity and the comfort level stays the same. So at 83 degrees, a 50% humidity feels very cool. You don't need to take the temperature down to 75. It would feel the same at 75 degrees at 80% humidity. So that we set the, set, set the settings for each of the stations. There is something called temperature and humidity smoothing. What that means is that if there was a very quick variation in the temperature or humidity because a door blew open and the wind hit the, um, hit the sensor, rather than make the sensor less sensitive, which most systems do by attaching it to a big lump of metal or something so it can't heat up very quickly, we allow it to 
have a very rapid transition but we don't allow it to change its reading to us very fast we, we can track that it wants to so for instance this would not jump up to 90 it would gradually creep up but by the time it's crept up the wind or whatever would have calmed down and it would have gone but it, but it does tell us there has been a rapid transition so we can tell something's going on and we can reset that the humidity alarm changes with each setting so for instance we've got this set to 58 the alarm will go off if it reaches 69 68, 69 so as that this changes for each degree of temperature the alarm level changes so there's always a certain number of percentage points above the desired setting so there's a window within which everything is monitored oh yeah something else I forgot to mention is here's the average audio level coming from each station so if I were to Take this one, and I'll just press the button, send it some very loud audio. See it coming up. If it gets high enough, it would go orange. So let me try and talk to it. There you go. I'll use the microphone to talk about it. It's gone orange now. It shows you it's a very high audio level. So if you've got a lot of noise coming in, you can't tell where it's from because all the sounds coming, the same sounds coming through a speaker, you can see from the audio level. And if there is an alarm, it will sound like this. Alert. Humidity too high. Alert. Humidity too high. So that's it. The system just sits and runs on a dedicated PC, takes up to five stations. This is the audio control unit. This allows us to listen to each of the stations, turn them up and down individually, and also to talk to any of them we just press the button here and we talk to them via this microphone. We can also feed an outgoing feed of audio, so in this case I've got some music playing, so if I send that to you can hear it coming back. Or we can monitor it directly by this knob here. So this allows us to set a mix of what we're listening to. So often the dogs are louder, so we'll turn those down, turn the monkeys up in our case, and to talk to any station. Here we are in monkey house number two. The system is just being installed, so you have to excuse the cables not being very tidy at the moment, but they will be. In this case, we've wired everything to a set of sockets, and we just bring the power in. It runs this little air conditioner, an extract fan, and a heater, which is not here at the moment. They just plug into the uh, sockets. So we can see the blue light shows us that the AC is on. The yellow shows us that daylight light, uh, uh, daytime lighting is on. We can change that. We can put the nighttime lighting on, or we can switch it back on. After 10 minutes, the computer would take control of that. Now, if I ask for a bit more level in music. Um, Kim back in the house can turn that up and down for me. Do you want to turn down a bit? And talk to me. Hello. See, you've got full two way communication. Thank you. And this little monkey's a benefit from the comfort. <laughs> this wiring is just temporary, it's going to get tidied up, but the unit just literally plugs into power. Single Cat 5 cable which goes back to the house. I've got an extra suppressor in line just as a double safety. So you see the AC is just turned off that now. The little blinking light, little flashing light is when the remote station pulses this. So each time it's pulsing it to get a status you get that little 
flashing light. If we were to lose communication, I'll just unplug this Cat5 here. So we've lost communication now. So the unit, after not seeing data for quite some time, over about 20 seconds, will decide it's got to take over control on its own. It will have downloaded all the latest settings. There you are, there's a double flash to show it's lost control. But it will have downloaded all the latest settings which it constantly updates. So it's taking over control with the last settings you sent it. And if it doesn't have any settings, if you just turned on, it's got a default set programmed in. So it can still do complete um, temperature and humidity control. We'll plug it back in. There we go. We'll plug back in now and you'll see it's getting a little sync itself up. It's got a status ping there from the main station. It's also got an audio level alarm for a lot of audio. The red, little red light flashes show it's very high audio. Just so you can check that it's working. So you just shout into it and then the red, the red light comes on. For bigger systems, these relay outputs could just be wired into control system rather than to actually handle power. So they, they're just relay closures that can cope with it. They're just relay closures that can cope with anything. That's the system at work. This is the loudspeaker in the kitchen, which um, on which you can hear the mix that you've set on the audio control unit. And the unit's got several outputs, so you can put little powered speakers all over the house or office or whatever, so you can hear uh, the audio incoming from each of the stations, plus any audio alarms can be heard everywhere, including fire alarm, temperature, humidity, uh, data loss if the system was to lose connection to the main uh, station and have to go into local control mode. You can also hear anybody um, wanting to communicate with you from the other end by pressing the call button, which sounds an alarm. So you know to go to the main station and talk to them. This is one of the early prototypes, like most prototype electronics. It's what they call a breadboard. That allowed us to develop the system and test it. This one was tested for two years and changed, reprogrammed constantly, developed. And now we have circuit boards like this, custom-made circuit boards, which we designed very high quality using very reliable techniques everything we've used to be able to get audio and data over very long distances without splats and interference and to get incredible reliability uses established techniques and the board when it's got components on looks like that this is an earlier prototype As you can see, the standard is extremely high because we wanted that reliability, we wanted that production standard. We want to be able to switch it on and forget about it, and it runs for years.